center, who is, I call him Baby Shaq in that paint, finishes well over that right shoulder because he's left-handed and just bullies people in the paint. And we are underway. Game three of the day here in Charlotte. Should be another good one. Four of the first six games here on the men's side have gone into overtime, and one was one at the buzzer. High points in the purple uniforms, Winthrop in the whites. And right away, quick shots by Zunabor, a little bit too strong, and Winthrop now back the other way. We well, mentioned D.J. Burns, 6'9", 250, out of Rock Hill, South Carolina, the Big South Player of the Year. Average 15 points, five rebounds per, per contest. And on the flip side, the other player we mentioned, number 55, the freshman of the year, Zach Austin. In that game just two nights ago, 24 points and 16 rebounds. Burns tied up, tipped, gets it back. And the big man trying to finish it underneath the rim, but ran out of time. Shot clock violation. And that was great defense from the Zunenborg. You also saw High Point throw a double team at DJ Burns and make him have to finish over two vertically. And what you're also seeing is High Point offset DJ Burns with size and strength, which is very rare. And he only scored eight points against High Point at High Point. Take a look at our Sunbell Rentals starting lineups. John Michael Wright, Brian Randleman, Emmanuel Azunabor, who you just talked about, Rob Peterson, and Zach Austin. And on the other side for the Winthrop Eagles, Michael Anumba, Drew Bugs, Corey Hightower, DJ Burns Jr., and Chase Claxton. Again, our Sunbelt Rentals starting lineups. Bugs able to sneak underneath. And passes out of the double team to DJ Burns with our first bucket. That's the thing that Drew Bugs does very well. He can get into the lane, and he's great size, about 6'3", gets downhill very easily, capable shooter, but not looking to shoot. When he gets in that lane, he is planning on finding somebody and putting the ball in their hands so that they can score. Bugs lobs it. A little bit too tall, though. And High Point quickly back the other way into the corner. Wright gives it up to Peterson. That's going to be an offensive foul. We've seen a lot of that, and that one was pretty obvious. Absolutely. And Peterson had already had his mind up, mind made up at that point where he was going to try to get downhill, put his shoulder into his chest, and uh, that's going to be an offensive foul nine times out of ten. Yeah, got a pretty obvious one there. So Peterson picks up the foul. Winthrop with an early two to nothing lead. And a nice finish by Michael Anumba. And that's what Michael Anumba does. What Winthrop will do to get him going is they will clear out the baseline and let him rip and drive. And they will lift everybody else up on that team to make sure that he has a straight length with no help side. Austin to right, almost banked it in, spun around, offensive rebound by Peterson. Kicks it out to Randleman. Randleman was very integral in that win against Hampton the other night. Nice spin move, baseline, and that will not go. There's DJ Burns, quick pass underneath. Good look, a foul though on high point. It's a great give and go. There's so much attention on DJ Burns. All eyes go on him when he catches the ball. You see Hightower able to slip, get some space, and finish with an and one opportunity. See there, everybody's looking at him. First off, you can't let your man cut in front of your face on those back cuts. Randleman charged with the foul, getting him with the body. Well, John, obviously you are very familiar with this conference. Again, all-conference player at UNC Asheville here in the Big South. For those tuning in tonight who don't know, the Winthrop Eagles have been around for a long time. Back-to-back -back conference champions, three of the last five. Yeah, they have got a strong pedigree in winning the conference on a consistent basis and have continued to load up every single year to give themselves a chance to go dancing. 11 trips to the NCAA tournament for this program, the two seed here this year. As you see Chase Claxton go to the bench. Austin quiet so far, got a huge night two nights ago against Hampton. 
24 and 16. Incredible to watch him. And again, just a redshirt freshman. Shot clock down to eight. House fakes the shot, kicks it back out to Randleman. And the three pointer gets high point on the board. And Randleman, who is not a natural shooter, is capable of it. He's a Division I player. Big offensive board underneath by Kelton Talford. And he draws the foul. Kelton Talford has a unlimited motor. He continues to work. He continues to find opportunities to give himself opportunities. You see right there, Randleman knocking down that three. He's a lefty, doesn't get it often, but when he does, he, look, he sets his feet, tries to give himself a high percentage to make that shot. Randleman, the junior from Durham, North Carolina. Oh, too short by Talford. Now for the High Point Panthers, 14 and 17 on the season, seven and nine in conference play, as you can see on your screen there. They have won three straight, though. Finish the regular season, back-to-back -back wins to get on track, and then the win the other night against Hampton. So coming in with some momentum, some confidence. It was a tough game against Hampton, obviously going into overtime. And, you know, you just you wonder if High Point has enough in the tank to go against a fresh leg Winthrop. House drives into the lane and lays it in. We were so impressed with him, John, just a couple of nights ago. Just a sophomore from Richmond, Virginia. He had 19 points. And I know we've been making little um, fun little quirks with his name, House being house but he is a house down there strong as an ox chase claxton with the answer on the other end that went too short rebound down to the eagles sincere mcmahon guarded by house house turned his head for just a second mcmahon took the shot and missed it Here's John Michael Wright, conference's leading scorer during the regular season. He's got it here against Claxton. Gives it up to House again. House so strong, stays with it. Chip shot won't go, tipped. At the limit turnovers because High Point can create a ton of turnovers. And when they played before, they created 22 turnovers against Winthrop. And they have to stop the transition. And that means stopping Winthrop, like you just saw, getting out in the open floor and trying to create as quickly as possible so that D.J. Burns and Claxton can get angles and then play the half-court game, all right? So Winthrop loves to play in the half-court set. They're one of the most efficient teams in the nation in half-court offense. And so it makes it really difficult to lock in because of all the offensive weapons that they have on this roster. Zach Austin, freshman of the year, who we've been talking about, picks up his first foul. Bugs guarded by Peterson. Drives to the baseline, gets tripped. So another foul on High Point. You know, that's been a bit of an issue as the foul goes on Azunabor. Uh, just with these games, again, four of the first six games here on the men's side, going in overtime last couple days, foul's been obviously a big issue. As you take a look at High Point's head coach, G.G. Smith. Of course, the son of Tubby Smith, legendary head coach. And Kentucky Hall of Famer also High Point University Hall of Famer. Gigi just took over on February 16th. Tubby actually had a bout with COVID not only once but twice and has stepped away as his son has taken over. House gets tied up. Possession arrow will point in favor of Winthrop. House is trying to do everything that he can to create some opportunities where they can get some easy baskets because Winthrop in set half-court defense is also dead. See there, yeah, there's a lot of contact, but also it seemed like they had hands on the ball as well. Bugs trying to sneak it to DJ Burns down low, but well guarded. And Bugs off the glass and in. Bugs doing a really good job of demanding that paint. Every time he gets downhill, he's either creating for himself or his teammates. 
Bugs has played in 146 career games. Yeah. Great experienced player here for the Eagles. He is one of the top assist leaders in the Big South. Catch and shoot. He knows the system. He knows the winning culture under Coach Pat Kelsey, who did a fantastic job of taking the reins here at Winthrop. And he's over there at College of Charleston now, but Coach Prosser knows how to win. There's John Michael Wright. Gives it up to House. Winthrop has really neutralized Zach Austin to this point. But they've made it really difficult for him to get any type of space. They're playing him really physical. They're putting a guard. It's about his size on him and Claxton and uh, really making it difficult for him to get comfortable. Here's DJ Burns, player of the year in the Big South. Spins, kicks it out of the corner. And that one rims out. Childress into the game for high point. Bryson, sophomore. And that one tipped away. John Michael Wright able to save it. And Childress serves as that floor spreader. And right now, you're seeing that high point is really struggling getting downhill. You see that that's a tough shot from John Michael Wright, who is a three level scorer and can finish over just about anybody. But I think that Coach Smith would like for high point to get higher percentage shots instead of taking tough twos. Well, that was a tough shot. It's a tough two against a vertical DJ Burns. Good to Burns. And I think he took one too many steps. He did. Kind of shuffled his beat, yeah, his feet a little bit. A little bit of a drag there. Yep. DJ Burns, conference player of the year. It's a big fella, isn't he? Yeah, we got 6'9, 260 out of nearby Rock Hill, South Carolina. Here he is against Zach Austin. Like he just did a Euro, but from our viewpoint, it didn't seem like he dragged that foot, but on that playback, I'm not sure. Yeah, there was something about it that was just kind yeah, of. Yeah, it just yeah. didn't look comfortable. Maybe he's 6'9 and he's doing a Euro step. Maybe that threw us off. <laughs> He'll have a seat on the bench. So we'll see how High Point does now as the player of the year has gone to the bench to take some rest here with just under 12 minutes left. Austin throws it into the backcourt. We're going to say it was tipped, though, so High Point will keep it. Yeah. When we come back, a 7-2 run by the Eagles. And Winthrop on top here early in Charlotte. Hercules Tires is the official tire of the Big South Conference and for over 65 years has been providing tires with unbeatable quality at an unmatched value. Whatever the vehicle and whatever the terrain, Hercules Tires invites you to ride on our strength. For a retailer nearest you, visit HerculesTires.com. As we welcome you back inside the Bojangles Coliseum here in Charlotte, North Carolina with John Williams, I'm Jeff McCarriger. For those who don't know, John Williams again, all-conference player here in the Big South and also a member of the Harlem Globetrotters. Spent time traveling around to, what'd you say, over 40 countries? 40 different countries, all 50 states. Great career. Wright has to force up the shot, one second on the shot clock. And then we'll quickly go back to the Eagles. It was great defense from Hightower there, using his length, his agility to just make it a tough shot for John Michael Wright. Did you guys ever lose when you were playing with the Globetrotters? No, I, I would have lost my job if that would happen. <laughs> I saw some highlights of the Jet. Good stuff. It's fun. It's a fun season. The man on the kick out into the corner. And again, they kick it out into the game as Russell Jones Jr. for the first time gets a touch and a three. And that's what Russell Jones Jr. does. He's a facilitator, but also a high percentage shooter. Richmond, Virginia, off the bench just two nights ago, 19 points, three of three from three-point range. I mean, he was critical in that overtime win. Well, there's just not a, not much of an answer for him. Him being at the guard position as quick and as strong as he is and being able to control his body in the air and absorb contact, real big, tough guard. Throw back and a step back by Hightower. They're going to say his foot was on the line, so a two-pointer. 
Hightower is a long, about 6'7", but can also spread the floor with his shot, take advantage of matchups by posting up, putting the ball on the deck. He's definitely a special player. Williams feeds the corner. Three-pointer by Austin. No good. Backside rebound by Talford. Here comes Winthrop with the nine-point lead. Nice catch. Good save in the corner. Anuba thought about it. Back to Jones. It's too much space for Jones. You can't keep doing that to him. He's not looking to drive because he's about 5'7 out here, but he is definitely capable of knocking down that shot on a consistent basis. Offensive rebound, quick pass underneath and a foul. Great look by House inside, trying to find Alex Holt. And while we got a moment, Alex Holt, that was another familiar name the other night against Hampton. Oh, yeah. He had 13 points and nine rebounds off the bench. He came alive off the bench, did a really good job of just battling for the entire game. And, and that's hard to do. I didn't see him rest on plays. He was just going after it, using that motor of his to create more opportunities for his team. He has struggled from the free throw line. But we talked about this the other night, but he gives you a lot. Yeah, that's exactly right. And he hit some tough free throws, too, when his team needed against Hampton. That's true. Yep. So, Down the stretch. Yeah, but he did miss one just like we just saw there. And I was just like, oh, you know, that's a good foul. And then all of a sudden, he makes both of them. And so um, he might be a guy that just wants the moment. <laughs> Needs the pressure. Needs the pressure. I need a hand in my face. That guy. <laughs> Stays 18 to 9. DJ Burns back into the game. Trying to get it to him, and they do. Guarded by Hole. And that one sent too high. Good was trying to save it, and the turnover will give it to High Point. 9.36 to play here in the first half. Right, conference's leading score, jumper just inside the arc. Misses Williams though with the offensive rebound. Kick out to House. Drives it blocked by Burns underneath, and they're gonna get him with the foul. The thing is, is House, we talked about it before, with his body and his size, when he drives, he's like a he's like a train coming down the tracks. And when he hits you, I mean that means a lot if you're able to bump DJ Burns back. All right, that kid doesn't move much, but this is a strong kid we're talking about. And at this point, he's just hanging on for dear life, trying to get, go after the ball. And so it just tells you how strong the kid, House, is. High point trying to get back into this one, missing three straight free throws now. The foul of Burns was his first. And House will knock that one in to make it 18 to 10. Well, as John mentioned, back in the open for high points, they're one of only two teams to beat Winthrop in conference play this year. Now, they also caught Winthrop at a vulnerable moment. They had just played three games in five days, so they were definitely fatigued. And it's during that COVID stretch where a whole lot of makeup games had to be had. And so, you might not have gotten the best version, and both of these teams were doing it. And so it was tough to see the best version of both, but it was at high point, and high point is really good at their house. Foul on Rob Peterson for high point. Corey Hightower is going to have a seat. Again, there's G.G. Smith just taking over the program just a few weeks ago from his father. Gigi, for those who don't know, a really good player back in college. He played at Georgia, three-year starter, all-conference. And you know, a lot of talk right now about Georgia underachieving, but they didn't back when Gigi was there. Two NCAA tournament appearances. Yeah, I mean, I understand the situation in Georgia now is rough, and, but it's not bleak. I mean, they've got great coaching. I mean, they'll figure it out, I think. Offensive rebounds. Real clear out there. 
Still won't go, and now high point the other way. House, no numbers, waiting for some help. Zach Austin, no good on the free. Slaps his thighs. Having a tough time trying to get on track here early. Anumba with a look, and he knocks it in. And that's one thing that Winthrop can do, especially out in the open floor. They can knock down threes because defense is having adjusted yet. Either they're knocking down threes or they're getting post-up angles at a high percentage. Williams hanging in the air, caught underneath the bucket, had to try a reverse layup. Another three on the way. That one too short. And House with the long rebound. That's something that High Point has to continue to do, try to get out in the open floor and run. A couple of tips won't go. Williams able to save it to Holt. It's going to be tough to score on Winthrop because they've got so much length and size that it's hard to drive, and these guys are athletic. They can play one-on-one -on -one defense very well, and so it just makes it difficult because they clog that paint up. They've got people that can deflect and alter shots, and DJ Burns and Claxton down there, and... And so it makes it really difficult for teams to get there. But if you can show that you can shoot the ball, it spreads them out a little bit where you can get those angles for straight line drives. Right slips a bit. Tip won't go. House had a hand on it. Still loose. And Winthrop comes down with it. Good. Stops. A little bit too strong. Offensive rebound, though, for the Eagles. They'll try another three. That one rims out to another offensive rebound. And Nuba has it stripped, though. You see how pesky Winthrop is when it comes to trying to hunt for second chance points in the rebounding. They don't even have DJ Burns in right now. Whistle before the shot. And this is going to be on the offensive side, so foul. Actually, no, yeah. It's going to, no, this will go against the Panthers, so Zunabor gets the foul. That'll be his second. Talford did a really good job of just selling those bumps that Azunabor was trying to do when he was battling in, in, the, in the paint. And uh, he was hunting and putting his shoulder into his chest and he's looking at the ref. Not going to fall, but hey, I'm getting hit. Bugs swings it over to Good. Underneath to Talford, who walked with it. And now D.J. Burns will come back in. So Burns has been out. Zach Austin was out, but he's back in now for high point. You know, going back to your point with the Eagles as you look at D.J. Burns, you mentioned earlier in this half about the depth of Winthrop. They've got seven guys who have scored already. Yeah, I mean, they have a ton of depth, which is why it's tough to beat them, and all of them are talented. Uh, enough to take over a game if needed, and that makes it difficult for you to just hone in on one person or two people. You know, High Point's got two or three guys that you can hone in on for to stop on offense. But when it comes to High Point, everybody can score the ball. Jaden House trying to keep High Point alive. It's a 21 to 13 long pass the other way, and this is going to go back to High Point. And that's the three that. High point needed to get themselves back in it. You see right there, House coming up for the shake pass, knocking down that three. And he's going to have to do that as well as John Michael Wright and, and Zach Austin to continue to try to spread this defense out so that they can then get some straight line drives and get into the paint. Wright finds hold, little chip shot won't go. Burns against Holt, now double team. Trying to make him give it up. Instead, he spins baseline. Zach Austin went flying into the air to try and block it. But the big man with the finish, and Winthrop on top by 10. At that point, when DJ Burns has that kind of angle on the drop step, it's over. Strong move underneath by Alex Holt. We were just talking about the night he had two nights ago. Absolutely. That was that was a go get your face back over there, Alex Holt. You know, he had to go and I don't like it. We got a little matchup between two. Two bigs out here. Burns can't get the roll. And high point with another opportunity. Randleman right down the lane. Missed it. 
And Gigi Smith is upset because somebody grabbed the net and pulled the rim down. Short shot, but the follow. Drew Buck and Williamson and John Moran. Absolutely. Randleman feeds it to Holtz, guarded by Burns, pushing his way in. Back to Holt. Goes baseline, quick shot. Gets his own rebound, puts it back up, still won't go, and this time Burns able to grab it. And I understand why they are trying to get an isolation between Holt and Burns. They want B Burns to get that second foul so that he's out of the game. Bounce pass into the corner, that went in and out. Zach Austin with the rebound, nearly throws it away. House thought about the three. He's been the biggest scoring threat so far for High Point. Right, stops, baseline jumper. Winthrop has done a really good job of making it difficult for High Point to take you know, their first phase of offense. And they want to get downhill. They want to get paint touches, penetrate and pitch, but if you can't shoot the ball, if you're not shooting the ball at a high percentage, then Winthrop's going to continue to pack it in and make it difficult for you to get into that paint. And so High Point has to continue to show Winthrop or has to continue to try to show Winthrop that they can make the outside shot, which then spreads them out. And now you get straight line drives and then they get more balanced offense. High Point just five for 27 in this first half. Wright picks it up, can't hit it off the glass. Zunabor right there, he can't bank it in. Tip, tip won't go, Wright's got it. That ball just will not go, but Wright is fouled ahead of the free throw line. And that foul is on Burns. You were talking about this, they were trying to go at him and try to see if they get Burns with his second, they finally do it. Yeah, and Burns was really just trying to hunt for that rebound, but at the same time, you've got some, some small guys down there with active hands, and so every time he would almost have it, there was a hand there, and then he'd throw it, toss it up in the air, and then somebody, he'd almost get it again. Same thing, and to a point where he just got that frustration. And foul there. And high points, not only struggling from two-point range, but from the free throw line as well, three for seven. So Burns comes out with a couple of fouls, and that one won't go. Rim's got a lid on it right now. That is rare. John Michael Wright, really good free throw shooter. Three minutes left to play, first half. There's Claxton. Gives it to Good. Shot clock down to seven. They go underneath to Hightower. Quick shot in the paint. And High Point is trying everything. They just tried the matchup zone. Weren't able to get much out of that. They're just trying to make something happen on the offensive end or on the defensive end so that they can start getting stops and slow down this Winthrop offense. Jones hangs in the air. Hightower trying to save it. Tipped out of bounds. And last touch by High Point. Oh, Winthrop with some length, too. Look at Talford. I mean, just the wingspan. Yeah. He and Claxton. Yeah, you got Talford, Claxton, even Hightower, yeah. who's a 6 7 wing. I mean, they've got a ton of size from their 3, 4, and 5 positions. And if Anumba's in there, it's about 6 5. He plays two sometimes for them. I mean, they can be big. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Bugs baseline. Layup is just a little bit short. And a foul on Winthrop. It's going to be on Chase Claxton. Two minutes, 13 seconds left to play in this half. And you were just talking during the break. We were talking about high points. I mean, they're 0 for their last seven, one for their last nine. But, you know, if they can just get a couple of threes here, and cut this to single digits before half, they at least have a little bit of momentum. And they, they've had cold starts before, and uh, that's been the story of 
of their season where they can't get going offensively or catch it a rhythm, um, that's when they struggle. But when they are getting after it and being consistent offensively, they are one of the toughest teams to beat in the Big South. You see right there, House getting into that lane and because of the shiftiness as well as the size and strength. House with 10 of the 17 points for high point. Good trying to answer for three. Missed it to Austin with the rebound. Here's House again. All the way into the lane. Too short. Tipped. And Winthrop pulls it down. Oh, and tipped out of bounds by Zach Austin. With 120 left to play here in the half. Zach Austin, Big South Freshman of the Year. And this is a different type of game for Zach Austin. I mean, great freshman, very talented. Um, played with a ton of energy in that first game, but he's playing against grown men right now. 0 for 4 to start. Bugs trying to make something happen. Spins and scores. Wow, he went right around Azunabor. Beautiful move from Bugs there. And the thing is, he had a, a slower big on him, and he just used his angle to his advantage and finished strong. Tipped away. House grabs it. 15 seconds on the shot clock here for High Point. One for their last nine. Zach Austin 0 for 4. Trying to get on the scoreboard. Can't do it. Talford and Bugs collide. Winthrop blowing a foul, not getting it. Bugs may have dislocated his shoulder. He had that, he had all that energy. Here's Sincere McMahon. 12 seconds on the shot clock, about four or five seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Five seconds on the shot clock for McMahon. Down to two seconds. High tower rattles in the three. He has nine points. And now the largest lead for Winthrop. That might come down when we get to the second half uh, to something that's pivotal for High Point. All right, here we go, second half. Again, Winthrop in the whites. Here's DJ Burns, conference player of the year. Back and in against Azunabor. Bugs back down underneath with the left hand. Sneaky by Corey Hightower. And that's what Bugs does when he gets into the paint. He's he can score there, but he's also looking to create for somebody that's available in that paint area. Foul on Azunabor for the Panthers. We'll go back the other way for the Eagles. You see it. He sees it before it even happens. Gets Hightower in a high percentage situation right under the basket where he can score it on, at ease. Azunabor just picked up his third. And by the way, we also have another whistle and a technical. Azunabor's got four. So free throws on the other end for Anumba. And then Winthrop will get the basketball as well. Yeah, so Azunabor was hit for the personal foul and then the technical foul. So number three and four. And that's big because Azunabor has the size and strength. You see him right there. That's a big cat right there. He's got the size and the strength to be able to combat against DJ Burns and him being out. And Holt's going to do everything he can, but he's not as big as Azunabor yet. And so that might be a factor in this game. Burns against Holt with the left hand. Nice touch by the big fella. You don't see a lot of post players that size, that kind of strength, that have that kind of touch around the basket. Winthrop now by 20. A little collision there. and. Zach Austin just simply stepping on the baseline, so a turnover again will give it back to the Eagles. See it right there. He takes his time, sizes up his prey, and finishes. Well, we'll see if High Points can do anything here to try and get back into this game. This is not 
what we've been seeing here in Charlotte this year for the first six games went into overtime. One of the two that didn't was decided at the buzzer. And Charleston Southern's first round victory. Wow, what a strong move from Hightower there. Putting his shoulder in Peterson's chest and going up strong. Hightower with 13 points. He's 5 of 9 from the field. Deflection. Austin just can't get anything going. Peterson swings it around to the right side. Claxton is very similar to great finish there from Randleman. Randleman with five points. Winthrop really having their way in the paint. 22 points. Burns trying to add to that. Can't do it. Just rolls off the front of the rim. Randleman trying to kick it out, and that's going to be a backcourt violation. We talked about Zach Austin struggling in this game. And a lot of that is because Winthrop has been able to match him with length and athleticism, just like what he is. You got Claxton who can guard multiple positions. You got Hightower that can guard multiple positions and have the length to alter his shot. Doing a really good job of just playing physical with him, uh, taking away his openings and his straight line drives, and really struggled today. Hightower has got it again, 13 points for the Redshirt Junior. Bugs. Turns and fires, no good. Rebound down to Alex Holt. House was the biggest offensive threat for High Point back in the first half at 10 points. He's got it here going against Hightower. Tries to find right to the foul on Winthrop. It is just so difficult right now for High Point, isn't it? Yeah, it's really difficult for, for High Point to score the ball. And a lot of that is because Winthrop is a great defensive team, but also are playing right into their strategy and saying, I dare you make a couple of shots before we spread it out a little bit because we know what you guys like to do. High Point runs a, several different sets where they try to get dribble drive actions, getting into the paint and creating, and it's just been really difficult for them because Winthrop is clogging those lanes up with their size and athleticism. Zach Austin still can't get one to go down, but right underneath the bucket was John Michael Wright. Nice hands to put it back in. McMahon out to Hightower. Shoots it over the top of House and Holt with the rebound. John Michael Wright gives it up to Randleman. Strong drive leaves it short for the foul of the Eagles again. And you see, that was one of the more clear lanes that you saw from High Point. And all that started with High Point getting out in the open floor and attacking early in the shot clock before Winthrop can get set. When Winthrop gets set in a half court defense, there are no holes in that defense. And if you can't shoot the ball consistently or if you're off that night, you have to find other ways to impact the game against this team. Randleman now with six points. We see Hightower getting a much deserved rest here with 16-20 to play in the game. Now it bounces out on Randleman. Claxton down low, feeds it to Talford against Holt, and he just got way too low. I mean, there's no way you're going to stop him by the time he gets that low. You can't let Talford or anybody in the paint that is skilled and talented to catch the ball that deep, that uh, that early. And so all you just saw was Talford just bat him down a couple more steps and finish. Turnover number 11 on high points. Long pass to Talford. The Hill, Winthrop out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. 
I love it. Winthrop definitely always brings fans. And when you play Winthrop at their house, it is always an exciting environment. Speaking of house, Jaden House drives and scores for high point. And he's been the one bright spot offensively. 12 points now for the sophomore. And yeah, in order for high point to be effective, you've got to have House cooking. You've got to have Austin cooking. You've got to have John Michael Wright going. And so right now you don't have that because Winthrop has pretty much equalized the rest of their unit. And the guy cooking all the dinner right now is Hightower. Oh, yeah, Hightower has definitely been on one this half. Here is the sophomore. Great split, great finish. But Hightower is continuing to pick up where he left off in that first half by being that bright spot offensively on both ends of the floor, but especially from the three. It's 16 points for Hightower, 6 of 11 from the field. Zach Austin still looking for his first bucket and just can't get it to go. 0 for 7. And, you know, I mean, I, I mean, you tell me, when I look at his stats, he's 0 for 7, right? 0 for 6 from three-point range. Yeah, he's he's settling because of there is no lane. And and he's not he's just as quick. You know, Hightower is as quick as he is. Klassen is just as quick as he is. So there's no lane for you to go. Sincere McMahon spreading out this lead for Winthrop. We talked about this at halftime. If a couple of shots would have went down in that first half, it could have got ugly real quick. And Winthrop is definitely capable of making a lot of threes. It, it, it could be a close game, and then all of a sudden that run hits you, and you're in trouble. Winthrop 6 for 17 now from three-point range, including this one right here. Beautiful shot from McMahon there. 6-0 run by Winthrop who already had a big lead. And now their largest lead, a 23-point advantage here in the quarterfinals. And a blocking foul against the Eagles. That's a smart play from McMahon there. He felt that little extension of the arm and thought that he could draw that foul on House, who has been pretty much the only offensive threat for high point. Try to get him in some foul trouble. Austin. Offensive rebound on that backside, guarded by Hightower. And that one's good. John Michael Wright with the three. It's a big three for John Michael Wright, who has definitely struggled shooting the ball and getting to his spots. And, and a lot of that is because Winthrop has taken him out of those spots that he usually likes to make comfortably. Off the hands of Claxton and out of bounds. Winthrop up by 20. I actually had a chance to witness and call the largest comeback in NCAA history. Tell me more. Delaware over Drexel. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say that. Delaware was at Drexel. Delaware had the big lead. 33 points in the second half. Drexel came all the way back to beat him. Mm. But that being said, there's a little bit more time left on the clock in this one. Yeah, you know, as you start to get closer and closer, 13 minutes left in this game, you've got to start accumulating some stops, but then also making some shots. You know, John Michael Wright, there you go. He can do it. It's a good start, but like I said before, you have to get stops. And right now, Winthrop has just been having their way offensively. High point, two for the first 12 from three-point range, and now have hit back-to-back. Good throws it back into the corner to Jones. Feeds it underneath the whistle, though, before the bucket. So a little 6-0 run by High Point to try and whittle down this lead. 12.51 to play. That's a big word, whittling it down. You can't come out of here and try to get home runs. It's going to start with stops on the defensive end. You see John Michael Wright knocking down a big three. A little bit of space that he's had, and once he sees it going once, he can make tough twos, tough shots. Zach Austin swats that one away. Well, anything's possible. Again, I remember doing that game with Mac McCarthy, former head coach of VCU in Chattanooga. Had some great teams that went to the NCAA tournaments, and I remember, I mean, it was 33, 
And they were kind of trading buckets, and all of a sudden, Drexel made a little run, and they hit a three, and I said to Mac, I said, I cannot believe this, but I'm saying this, but the lead is down to 19. And at the time, we were kind of joking, but, yeah. you know, again, we've talked about it this week, the three-pointer, anything is possible. Yeah, and it's all about momentum, too. If you take a team out of their rhythm, if you make them uncomfortable, if they start to play with nerves, they start second-guessing, the things that they normally do well. Yeah. And then you can go on a run, give yourself an opportunity to win a game just because the pressure is on that team that had the lead because you're supposed to keep the lead. House nearly turned it over, right? Gets it back. Fires a three, just won't go. Rebound down to Winthrop. As a player, how, how do you battle through that momentum? Yeah, I mean, I've been in games where we have controlled the league, and then all of a sudden a team goes on a run and nothing goes your way, and then things get real disrespectful, and uh, you tighten up a little bit, and all of a sudden you, you lose a game that you had control of for the majority of the game, and that's a terrible feeling, I tell you what. So at this point, I mean, is, is Winthrop starting to feel a little bit now or no? Not yet. They're experienced, but at the same time, everybody feels that at some point. His son, G.G. Smith, took over back on February 16th. I tell you, on a serious note, great to see Tubby in the seats and healthy again. We talked about it earlier, touched on it, but it's not only one but two bouts of COVID. Absolutely. And uh, it's always good just to see Tubby in the gym and still supporting the school and being that catalyst for the program to continue to move and trend in a positive direction. 631 career wins for Tubby Smith. And of course, the national title at Kentucky in 1998. That one heaved up at the buzzer and out of bounds will go back to high point. So again, another stop. Yep, and if by any chance you're just tuning in, Winthrop led by as many as 23 points. So when we say it's down to 15, I mean, it's real. High Point is starting to make some shots. They were two for 12 from three-point range to start. They've hit three straight. House looking for another one. This one a little bit too strong. Numa with the rebound. And yeah, you can see and this is where we talk about the experience of Winthrop. They don't seem rattled by the run. Hightower has that one spin out. Randleman with the rebound. Right, stops, no numbers at all, and chips it in. That was one on three, and he still scores. It's better than playing against five Winthrop Eagles in a set defense. You got to start making something happen by using the open floor to your advantage. Bugs turned by Austin. And now he's got it back, so the lead now down to 13. Anumba to Burns against Austin. Throws a fastball into the corner. That shot missed. High point, another opportunity. Two on two back the other way. Right stops. Looking for help and finds Austin. And you see it too. You know, we saw the game with Zach Austin against Hampton. Everything. It was just so much energy. And so right now, he's just, you can't play based on you seeing the ball go in the basket. And he was putting the ball in the basket, so his energy level was on 1,000. He's got to find other ways to keep that up, and it starts on the defensive end. And he's got to continue to fight and, and find ways to put the ball in the basket on the offensive end. 11 to 1 run right now for the High Point Panthers. Shot clock down to three. Anumba gets Austin in the air. One second left and lays it in. What a shot by Anumba. Yeah, all off of a pump fake. And House loses it out of bounds. Great drive here by Anumba. Great touch, putting it in that offhand and seeing it in the basket. I mean, this guy, and they don't talk about Anumba enough, but he is one of those Swiss Army knives that does the, the intangibles that you can't really find on a stat sheet, but makes a huge difference in big games. Is that our strong move? It could be. Could be. I mean, it's a strong candidate. 
listen, I, I we, you know, we got some dunks that could come out of nowhere, and so you especially with, away for right uh, now. Yeah, especially with open floor situations and presses being about to st or starting to happen. Uh, it could happen where we get a uh, maybe some kind of poster or something. Let's just be patient. Play it out. <laughs> Pretty good though. One second on the shot clock. Yeah. Some momentum for high points. Solid. Yeah. You can make an argument for it. Claxton gives it up. Two seconds left in the shot clock. And that one off the front of the rim. Tracked down by Wright. High point. Quickly back the other way. Wright, nice shovel pass. And the jam by House. There, that, there, we just talked about it. That could be it. That's good candidate as well. I don't know what was better, the dunk or the pass. 13-point lead for High Point after leading by 23. All right, we're going to call it. It's time for our Hercules strong move of the game, and here it is. And who better than House? Really just been carrying this group, him and John Michael Wright offensively. And there's your tandem right there that have really taken over in the second half for the High Point Panthers. So again, that'll be our strong move of the game brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Nuba has to back it out. You can tell a difference in the defensive energy right now for high point. Yeah. The swing of the corner. Oh, big three-pointer. By Sincere McMahon, the sophomore from Indianapolis. A huge shot for the Eagles. That's the thing. High point or Winthrop has never been rattled by the, the momentum shift that High Point has been trying to find. And a lot of that is because of that experience that we talk about. These guys have been in tough situations. They played in the and won several one possession games. And so these guys know how to win and aren't really rattled by those situations. Wow, how about Peterson in the lane? You can just feel the energy has ratcheted up here in the last team. You've got so many different pieces that that feed to a winning culture. You've got shooters, drivers, post players, and facilitators that all can get things happening and make it really difficult for you to, you know, put together a, com a comeback like High Point is trying to do here. Another difference in this one, just to kind of further that point, High Point has had only five players that have scored. Winthrop's had nine different guys that have scored. Shot clock down to five. McMahon hit a big one earlier. This one bounces out. High Point trailed by as many as 23. Down 13 here, make it 11. John Michael Wright on the drive. And all that was down to John Michael Wright getting out in the open floor. He's caught several, he's caught a little bit of a rhythm just from pushing the ball as quickly as possible because Winthrop has definitely struggled against, or Winthrop has struggled against high point in the open floor and fast break opportunities. They feed it to Talford, double teamed. And, oh, they're gonna call a tie up. So jump ball and a possession arrow is in favor of high point. Bumping underneath there. Yeah, a lot of contact down there, but Peterson did a good job of just trying to stay vertical. Tried to see if he could get a little charge call there. High point a chance to make this a single digit lead for the Eagles. Randleman gives it to Wright. He has 14, drives, hangs. A little bit short, but a foul and free throws coming up. For John Michael Wright, one of the better free throw shooters on this team, shooting 79% on the season. That foul, by the way, goes against Anuba. That's going to be his fourth. Anuba brings so much energy to this Winthrop team. Just being able to guard multiple positions. Whoever your best player is, he's guarding them. But also on the offensive end, just somebody who can rebound, somebody who can get into the paint and put pressure, somebody who can get isolations from the corner. He's an important player for this team. But the scary part is, he goes out, Hightower comes in. Right, yeah. And all Hightower has done is go for 16 and 5 so far in this one. Pick your poison, man. 
Well, meanwhile, high point chipping away. It's down to nine, John. Yeah, and so you know, like they've been pressing this entire game and or this entire half. Do they have enough left in the tank to make this happen? See, this is where your experience is jading you. Because you have played literally against this team. You've played yes. against the staff. You know how good they are. They always yeah. win, right? I mean, back-to-back -back conference champions. Been in the NCAA tournament 11 times. I mean, they've been here numerous times, right? Uh, I can't say they always win because I got a ring myself. So. <laughs> That's right. You guys got them, uh, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> but still very good. Burns. That's a strong move. Yeah, DJ Burns just being who he is. He's he hasn't played much, but when he does play and when he gets the ball in those types of situations, he's tough. Claxton comes away with it. Here's Bugs. Yeah, pretty soon here, the clock is going to be a big enemy for High Point. We're coming up on just five minutes left. Bugs drives too short. It's his own rebound. And they're going to say traveled. So High Point will have another opportunity. And I love how High Point is continuing to battle. I mean, I love that they are still trying to find ways to give themselves opportunities to win this game. But they're going to have to continue to get stops and put the ball in the basket. Winthrop has won this conference championship, not only back to back, but three of the last five. Up by 11, under five minutes now left to play. Wright slides to a stop. Randleman will pass across the lane out of bounds. And they're going to say it's going to stay with high point. With her players thinking it was off the leg of one of the Panther players. Yeah, I couldn't see it from my angle, but it like, oh, I don't know whose knee that popped off of. Looks like it might have gone off of his inboard. Board. Yep. What a spin move and a finish by. You got to tip your hat off the high point and how hard they're fighting. Uh, win or lose, and if they if they win, obviously that's going to be something incredible. But if they lose. They've got most of their guys coming back. It's going to be a great villain origin story. Anumba can't finish, but a foul. And this is going to go against Zach Austin, who just came back in. And the third now on Zach Austin. And this really has been a story on the opposite end. We've been talking about the success of Jaden House, but for Zach Austin, he still has not scored for high point. He's 0 for 8. And speaking of two nights ago, the freshman of the year, there he is, number 55. He went for 24 points and 16 rebounds just 48 hours ago. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, it, what Winthrop is doing is exposing his blemishes and things that he needs to work on. Talk about it, Kobe Bryant's rookie year. When he missed that big game-winning shot, had a rough game. That whole summer, he worked his tail off, worked on his blemishes, worked on the holes in his offense, and found a way to, to be one of the best players the game's ever seen. And so what you're seeing right now is Zach Austin's villain origin story, where he becomes one of those guys based on how his blemishes were exposed in this game. And you see him next year. And he comes back stronger. He comes back shooting the ball more efficiently. He comes back being that guy that can get downhill and still create those highlights that he's capable of. And it just takes sometimes losing. And, you know, Alfred said it best. Why do we fall? So, do we, so we can see ourselves get back up again. Yep. Zunabor, by the way, just fouled out. Frustrating night for Zunabor. Remember earlier, picked up that personal foul and the technical. Basically on the same play. Yeah. That gave him three and four. He just picked up his fifth. So he's out for the remaining just under four minutes. That was big for them. Bugs into the corner. High tower for three. High tower has been on one. 
Corey Hightower as we take a look at our Hercules Tires game summary. And here's the thing, too. Winthrop has so many players on that roster kit that can also do that. They can also just take the wind out of high point sales just based on their talent. House can't get it to go. Bugs with the rebound. Big possession here for Winthrop. Another two or three pointer here, and it might really demoralize High Point. Incredible game for Hightower. 19 points, five rebounds. Bugs running for his life and puts it in. Yeah, Bugs just did a full 360, just looking for somebody to get involved, and he just said, oh, I guess I'll just take it. Bugs with eight points, five rebounds. John Michael Wright, three-pointer and a foul. John Michael Wright has been fighting for his life this entire game, just trying to find ways, even when he was cold in that first half, continued to shoot the ball, showing his confidence there. Well, blows coming back and forth with 2.40 to play. First, here's Bugs for Winthrop. At 360. <laughs> Went all the way around every every defender, and then you see it here. John Michael Wright still trying to keep his team alive by making tough shot after tough shot. Chance at a four-point play. John Michael Wright now with 19 points. He and House both have 19. The rest of the team with just 10 points. Did you see the depth, right? Like as far as what high point has. They've got some talent. I mean, they've got some really good players on this team, but it's a different environment when it's tournament time. And this is win or go home in, you know, country at this point. Oh, and almost a turnover on that pass, but instead of foul on high point. That was a better remove from Anumba. He knew exactly what he was doing. Looking at the point totals here for High Point, just mentioned it, but again, Wright with 19, House with 19, Randleman with six, and then after that, you got Peterson who has one bucket, and Holt. How about Holt? He's been quiet tonight. Again, I, I think that's another big storyline. Winthrop has totally taken away the inside game. Yes, and that is how, you know, High Point was able to gain momentum against Hampton was paint touches, getting into that paint and really putting pressure on Hampton's defense, and then it spread them out. They were able to knock down tough threes um, to take away the momentum from Hampton. Holtz and Austin have combined for just two points. Tough shot at the back of the Iron Bugs with the rebound. And now the long outlet pass to Talford with the exclamation point on the other end. Yeah, and that's what happens when you you take your goalie out and you try to put as much pressure as you can in that front court. House trying to finish with the left hand. Hightower with the rebound and a quick foul by High Point. You see High Point putting a ton of pressure, trying to get an initial steal, but Bugs, court vision, an assist leader here. Finding the right man in Talford, and Talford finishing with the exclamation point. Hightower with 19 points. Give him 20 points and six rebounds. And now it's getting real for High Point. Down 16 again with just 201 to play. And High Point's working extremely hard, too. You see how hard they're working on the defensive end, and it's just been really difficult to play against such a balanced program in Winthrop, especially on the offensive end. Right drives, rolls it in. Right with 21. Conference's leading scorer averaged 18 and a half points per game during the regular season. And Russell Jones 
Trying to dribble out some clock. It looked like High Point was just going to kind of settle back in on their defense, but then all of a sudden, half court trap Jones. And now foul on the Panthers. It's going to be on Randleman, his third. And High Point's not going to give up. They're going to keep fighting. They're going to keep battling. They're just looking for the opening, but their only issue at this point is time. Tough time of year for players. Very few leave these tournaments with a win across the country. High point again made a strong run at the end of the year. Had one three straight coming into today. And House trying to force the issue, draws the foul. 110 to play. Well, you mentioned earlier, but a lot of good news for the Panthers and a lot of scoring coming back next year. And how about the beautiful new building they have as well? Absolutely. And that's going to help with recruiting. And you're seeing a really good and talented high point team that has majority of their guys coming back, majority of their scoring power coming back. And I'm sure they've got some recruits coming in that can also help. And just playing against a team like Winthrop that's got a lot of veterans on that team and, and a lot of consistency, it's going to be tough to beat that team. But high point, I think, like I said before, it could be an origin story for them. Or they could be a team next year that really puts a lot of pressure on those dominant teams in the Big South. Claxton out of the game. Anuba also to the bench has fouled out. Coming up on a minute left to play. Here's Jones out near the stripe as Winthrop looking to put the hammer down again. Again, back-to-back -back conference champions. They've won three of the last five. And Burns flexing his muscles right here. Gives Winthrop now a 17-point lead. Austin still can't get it to go. And he is dangerously close, John, to being scoreless in this game. Yeah, it's probably going to happen. The thing is, Zach Austin really tried to depend on that three too much. And he's got to find other ways to impact the game. He's got so much more to him. He can post up. He can drive. And so this is a good lesson for him and the rest of his teammates. You know, sometimes you got to lose in order to come back and and not want to have that feeling again. And, um, you know, great season for High Point and, and battling. Because, honestly, we didn't know what was going to happen against the Hampton game. And they fought through that. They gave everything they had in this game. And Winthrop, being the team that they are, so talented, so gifted, so, so much size and athleticism. They're just tough, tough team to beat. They, they definitely are the team to beat in the Big South tournament. Burns checks out. Ten points, five of nine from the field. Anumba, again, he fouled out. He's on the bench already with 11. And then the third in double figures for Winthrop, Corey Hightower. What a game. 21 points for the redshirt junior from Michigan. Seven of 13 from the field. Perfect from the free throw line. Six rebounds. No doubt the MVP today for the Eagles. Absolutely, Hightower did everything for his team, guarded the best.